Hi guys, thanks for visiting my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about one of my favorite things. And if you've followed me for very long, you know I sing the praises of whole made stock. There is just nothing like it. And not only is it delicious and nutritious, but it's also really economical and nothing goes to waste. And I love that. So today we're gonna to be making turkey stock from our leftover turkey carcass from the holidays. I know most people have turkey for Thanksgiving, some also have it for Christmas, so this is a great time to turn your leftovers from your turkey into some delicious stock. Now, stock can be canned or it can be frozen, so if you're not a canner, don't leave me because I'm gonna share instructions at the end of the video for both freezing the stock and for uh, pressure canning it. Um, stock is a low acid food, so we must pressure can it. It cannot be water bath canned if you are a canner. And I will share all the ins and outs of that towards the end of the video. But I just want to say that this is something that I truly love and I just think it's something that everyone should learn to do and it's not hard. We are going to be making stock. If you are wanting to make bone broth, it takes longer to cook than stock. Stock, you can have a really nutritious and delicious stock in about six to eight hours. But if you want a true bone broth, you have to cook it for 24 to 48 hours. I don't like to do that because I don't feel comfortable, and this is just me being weird. Um, I don't like to go to bed and leave my stove on, and I know some people use the crock pot, and that's totally fine, and if you're comfortable leaving your uh, stock to cook for 24 to 48 hours while you're sleeping or doing other things, that's fine. It's just, I don't, I don't enjoy doing that. It makes me nervous, so I don't. So I cook my stock. I try to get in eight hours. If I can get in 10, that's even better, but eight hours is a really good goal. And even six, you have a, a nice stock. So the six to 10 hours is a perfect amount of time. Obviously, the longer you cook it, the better it's going to be. And the longer you cook it, it will also gel up for you. So um, that just means that it's full of collagen, which is what is extracted from the bones as you are cooking it. So if you, to determine if you get true bone broth, if it gels, you know that you've gotten there. Now, because I don't do that, I'm going to refer you to a lovely lady. She has a wonderful channel. Um, her name, the name of the channel is Mary's Nest, and she's a delightful lady. I just adore her. And um, she does all traditional cooking methods. She's known for bone broth. She does ferments. She does sourdough. So she kind of does all those old school methods of things. So if you want to know the ins and outs of making bone broth, I'm going to refer for you to her channel because she does a phenomenal job of explaining the difference between broth stock and bone broth and um, she just is full of knowledge so I'm going to refer you to her channel make sure that if you do stop by her channel tell her that I sent you she makes lots of comments on my videos and I want her to know that I appreciate her as well so well, I started early this morning earlier this morning I guess and I went ahead and got my stock on but I um, videoed everything for you to show you what I did. You're obviously going to need your turkey carcass. I don't do anything special with it after we take all the meat off of it that we want. I don't remove anything, any aromatics or anything that I put stuffed inside to give him flavor. I leave all that in there and it goes into my stock pot when I'm making stock. So you don't have to worry about any of that. If you stuffed your turkey, you might want to dig all that out. I don't I don't know that you would want that in your stock, but any aromatics that you put in there, the onion, the um, herbs, all that kind of stuff can just stay in the inside of your turkey. And what makes it easier for me is I don't try to have turkey and make stock all in the same day. So what I do after we've had dinner, um, pick all the meat off and then I cover my turkey in foil and I stick it in the refrigerator and then I start early the next morning making my stock. So I take him out of the refrigerator, add him to the stock pot, add whatever other aromatics I want. I usually put in fresh celery, carrot, onion, some garlic, and a few other things that I explain here in just a minute. Um, to give it flavor and then I cover it. You want just enough water to just cover. You don't need to go up very high above it. I just use just enough to cover it and then I cook it 
low and slow for the eight hours. So um, it's not hard to do. And like I said, it's so nutritious and so good for you. Um, a few other things that you can add, and I do talk about this. I have another video on making chicken stock. And I do talk about this there. So I'm, I think it's worth mentioning here. Any vegetable scraps as you're cooking, anything that you can save, a lot of times I will put in a Ziploc freezer bag and stick it in the freezer until I'm ready to make stock. So you can save things like potato peelings, you can save the ends of your onions, the tops of carrots, um, carrot peelings. I've even saved the tops of peppers when I've been cutting up peppers. Um, any type of vegetable you can save to make stock. Now I would stay away from things that have really strong flavors like uh, broccoli, cauliflower, that kind of thing, but cabbage is great for seasoning your stock. It does add a lot of flavor and you may like adding, you know, the parts of the cauliflower or broccoli that you don't eat. All of that stuff is great to save to make stock because it, you're just infusing flavor. So that's another uh, thrifty way to get uh, the best bang for your buck out of veggies that you're already using and consuming. Just saving the parts that you don't eat, put them in a Ziploc freezer bag, and then when you're ready to make stock, you can make stock. And that brings me to another point. If you don't want to make um, a meat stock, you can just save all your vegetable scraps. Just make sure they're nice and clean and then put them in a Ziploc freezer bag. And then when you have a bag full of them, cover them with water and you can make stock from leftover vegetable pieces and parts. So it's really economical and it, it's, it's just it's so much better than than buying it from the grocery store. I can't. Hey guys, here we go. I did want to mention that I am going to use my Victorio multi-use canner for this. This is a great stock pot as well as a steam canner and water bath canner. So it's really a great tool to have in your kitchen. We're just going to take out the uh, rack. We obviously don't need that for making stock. A turkey carcass. We're going to put him in first. <laughs> Then we are going to add some aromatics. I always add a couple of chopped celery stalks and a few carrots. And then I also have a couple of onions that I just coarsely cut. I've really just quartered them and you do not need to remove the paper. That just means more flavor. So we're gonna put those in and then also a bulb of garlic that I just cut in half and I leave the paper on. There's no need to remove it. I like to add salt to my stock. If you don't want to have uh, salt in your stock, you don't need it, but I always do. And I use canning salt because I can mine up, but you can also freeze this. So uh, whatever salt you wanna use is fine. I like to use the canning salt when I'm canning because it, it's more pure. So um, just add, for me, I, use, I usually add a couple of tablespoons. And then the only other thing we need to do is cover everything with fresh water. And I always use filtered water from my refrigerator. Okay, I brought you in a little bit closer so you could see. I just have enough water in there just to barely cover my carcass. It, for me, it was about six quarts of water to cover everything. The other thing I'd like to add is a little palmful of um, peppercorns that adds some nice flavor and then the last thing we want to add is some cider vinegar a couple two three tablespoons the cider vinegar helps for to get the bones to release their vitamins minerals collagen all that goodness that we want in our stock so after that we're going to place our lid on and we're going to crank the heat up to high. We're going to bring it up to a boil, then reduce it to a really low simmer. Okay, guys, we have a really nice boil going on here. But something that I failed to mention earlier is if you don't use the neck and whatever you trim off your turkey and the innards to make gravy or dressing or whatever i know people use it for different things if you don't use that save it and then when you go to make your stock you can add it i did save mine um so i did 
I did go ahead and add it in here. So I also have the turkey neck, some of the skin that I trimmed off the turkey before I cooked it off, and the innards are in there as well. They're gonna add great flavor. So once you get to this point, we're just going to reduce our heat and we are looking for just a really nice, low, slow, gentle simmer. So I've turned mine down quite a bit. You want a, probably a, a low heat depending on the size of your burner. So we just want a nice low heat. We want a nice, slow, steady simmer. Something else I forget, failed to mention. Is you want, when you're making your stock, you wanna cook it with the lid on. So if you leave the lid off, a lot of your water will evaporate and we don't want that. So I always make my stock with my lid on uh, to prevent that from happening. Okay guys, we are about halfway through our cooking time here, and I cannot believe I forgot this, but one of the things that I always add to my stock are bay leaves, and I forgot. So I'm gonna go ahead and add two bay leaves now, but I would add these at the beginning normally. Um, bay leaves add a lot of flavor to your stock, so there's that. But anyway, you can see how everything's just really gently simmering, and we are just, moving and grooving here, so I'll bring you back soon. Hey guys, we're back. Our stock has been lightly simmering for the last eight hours. So now what I'm gonna do, I went ahead and I took the, I tasted it to make sure that it was the as flavorful as I wanted it to be. And at this point, you could also add more uh, salt if you want it or season it however you want to season it. But usually with what we did earlier, that's pretty good. So um, now what we're gonna do is I took the lid off and I'm gonna let it cool for at least a half an hour, maybe even an hour, and then we're gonna strain it. So a word about straining. There are different ways to do it and people have different ideas on how they want to do it. I only strain mine once, which means that you're gonna get a little bit of sediment in the bottom of your jar. If you can see that, I canned this up a few months ago, but I don't care. That just means that it's, that's just more flavor for me. But if you don't want that in your jar, you can use um, some cheesecloth inside of your strainer and that will strain out more of the smaller bits. But like I said, that to me, that's just flavor. So it's not a big deal to me. So I just use a strainer and I only strain it one time. So if you want really clear, pure stock, you may have to strain it a couple of times and use some cheesecloth. But like I said, I don't mind, it's less work and it means more flavor for me and that's just my opinion. So next up, straining. Okay guys, we're ready for straining. My stock is still a little hot, but it's good enough that we can strain it off. I just wanted to show you, I went ahead and pulled out all of the chunky stuff and you can tell the turkey has completely broken down and that's, that's what you're looking for. So I pull all that out and then I'm just gonna use a mesh strainer on top of uh, another stock pot, a large stock pot. And I like to do this in my sink in case anything, it, it's easy and in case there would be any mess at all, it, it's in my sink. So we're just gonna go ahead and grab my stock pot. And I always put a towel here. It makes it easier to strain your stock. And then we're just gonna pour the stock into the strainer. And like I said, if you wanted to strain it really finely you could add a couple layers of cheesecloth here and it would strain out more of the smaller bits i'm just going to carefully pour And there it strained out all of the smaller bits. Okay, now that I've strained my stock, usually what I do, because this is an all day affair of cooking it, 
At this point, it is totally fine to go ahead and can it. You would just want to go ahead and bring it back up to a simmer and then have all your canning stuff ready. This has to be pressure canned. You cannot water bath can this. This is a low acid food and you must pressure can it. So at this point, you could go ahead, put the pot back on the stove and bring it up to a simmer and then proceed with um, pressure canning instructions but what I like to do for two reasons one I'm usually tired by this point and it's dinner time I need to get dinner ready and I don't really want to fool with canning later in the evening like this so usually what I do is I let it cool I let it cool for several hours and then I will put it in the refrigerator and refrigerate it and then do the preserving part the next day. There are two reasons for that. One, like I said, I'm usually tired by this time and I'm dealing with dinner. And secondly, when it's cold, it will bring the fat to the surface. So in the morning before I can it, I can just skim off the fat and then I'm good to go. And it's already in my stock pot. All I have to do is bring it back up to a simmer and go ahead and can it. So I'm good that way. So next up is going to be preserving and I told you that we're not just going to can, I'm also going to show you how you can freeze it in case you are not a canner. If you are not a canner, please, please, please do not let this discourage you from making stock. You do not have to pressure can to make stock and preserve it and it, it, just don't let that deter you from doing it. So um, we're going to talk about freezing and we're going to talk about pressure canning. Next up. Okay guys, we are back and we are ready to start the preserving portion of our delicious turkey stock. Now there are two ways, and I have already mentioned these, we can either freeze it or you can can it, but if you can it, it must be pressure canned. It is a low acid food. You cannot water bath can stock. So um, that's where we're gonna start. So first we're gonna talk about freezing. You have a couple of options. You can freeze in mason jars. The only caveat to that is it has to be a jar that's completely straight. You cannot use quart jars. Any jar that has a neck like that, you cannot use them for freezing. Now I know that there are people online that will tell you that you can, but Ball, who is the maker, the manufacturer of these jars, does not recommend those for freezing. So if you want to take that chance and use that type of jar, that's up to you. I wouldn't want to risk it breaking in my freezer. Um, the other thing you need to know if you're going to freeze in jars is that there is a line, and I'm sure this is not going to show up on camera very well, but it says for freezing and it tells you to only fill and it is below, it's below this um, where you twist on the ring, it's below that. There's a line there below that. Maybe you can see it a little bit, I'm not sure, but you don't wanna fill any higher than that if you're gonna use jars. So for stock, you would wanna use the pint and a half or the wide mouth pint jars because they are also straight on the sides. There's no neck to them. So either one of these jars you could use and if you wanted to store um, freeze in smaller jars for storage, you can, you can use the um, jelly jars and there's even the little ones, but I can't imagine you'd want to freeze stock in such small amounts. But if you do, you can just make sure that it's a jar that has no neck and it's straight. So there's that. I don't ever freeze in jars. I just don't like dealing with glass in my freezer. Okay, so for freezing stock, I like to use the Ziploc freezer bags in the quart size. You can use gallon ones if you prefer, but I use quart, use, usually when I'm using stock, it's in quarts, so I use the quart size bags. And I'm gonna show you filling it, but we wanna fill it about to this line right here. That is about a quart of stock. And then, um, and I put it, put the bag down inside of a mason jar to help me hold the bag, and I'll show you that here shortly. But we wanna fill it about up to there, and then you take it out, and then you're going to remove the air, and then you're gonna lay it flat in your freezer until it freezes, and then you can stack them. And that makes it a really nice way to freeze your stock. Okay, I think you're in close enough. You can see pretty well. So see how we've had some of that float to the top? Some of it is fat, and some of it is just 
residue from what I did not strain off. So what I do, and you can leave this. If you don't want to do this, you do not have to. It just is flavor and you'll have a little fat that floats to the top of your jar if you are canning this. But I do skim this off. I don't make sure that I get absolutely every last bit of it. Like I said, it's really just flavor and it doesn't really bother me. So anyway, I would skim up off most of it, but what I wanted to show you is yesterday, remember how we were talking about the difference between stock and broth and um, bone broth? Well, when you get to bone broth, I taught how I talked about it gelling. Well, when this is cold, when you're getting close to bone broth, can you see that? See how that's starting to gel? So we've cooked this long enough that we are we're on our way to making true bone broth. But all that means is that there's all kinds of delicious, nutritious collagen in there and it is really, really good for you. So we did a nice job making our stock here. So I just wanted to show you that. So if you do, if you weren't aware of that and you put your stock in the refrigerator for whatever reason you saw that it did that, don't freak out. We, you want that. That gelling is a good thing. So we have, there's that. So I'm not gonna skim off any more of it. I'm gonna show you how I fill the freezer bags. I use a quart jar because it helps me to hold my freezer bag without it going all over the place. And then I just stick it down inside the jar and roll the top of it around the jar. And then we're gonna ladle in our stock. I'm gonna fill it about two thirds full. Stop just enough to get it started. And then pull it out. And then you don't wanna fill it too full because like I said, this is gonna expand. So really you're only gonna to wanna to fill it about this full because when you lay it down flat, it's gonna um, deflate part of it. But you wanna make sure you get all the air out. And then you're gonna lay it flat to freeze it like that. So that's just an easy way to freeze stock. And then like I said, put it in the freezer, laying down flat. And then once they're completely frozen, you can stack them. Okay, that's it for freezing. If you are not a canner, you can be excused if you will, if you are done. If you are a canner, we are moving on. Okay, so now we're going to bring our stock up to a boil. And while that's happening, I am going to get my jars and my lids ready and the canner too. Okay, I brought my stock back up to a boil and I have hot water in my canner, so we are ready for canning. Modern canning guidelines state that if you are canning for 10 minutes, processing for 10 minutes or more, you do not need to pre-sterilize jars and lids. You just wanna make sure that they're nice and clean and they're kept hot. So I have, I washed mine, they're squeaky clean, and I have them sitting in hot water in my sink. So we're ready to go. So let's grab a couple of jars canning in quarts so we're going to be processing for 25 minutes if you are canning in pints you are going to be your processing time is going to be 20 minutes so we're going to start with two jars and we are funnel and I think you can see really well so we're going to ladle in our stock we need a one inch head space Since this is all liquid, there's nothing to debubble. 
So we're going to take our paper towel, dip it in white vinegar, and then wipe the rim of our jars. We are going to center our lids. A one inch head space, by the way, just as an FYI, if you don't know, it's down to this last little, the bottom part of where you screw on the band. Screw on the bands, fingertip tight, and then into the canner they go. Okay, I got six quarts and some change in my stock. That uh, turkey that I roasted off was a 12 pound turkey. So out of a 12 pound turkey, you're gonna get at least six quarts of really highly nutritious and delicious stock. My canner is almost full, I only have room for one more. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my vinegar, and if you guys have watched me for very long, you know I love to do this. Anytime that I am pressure canning, I take a couple of tablespoons of white vinegar and pour it in my water and it just helps to keep mineral deposits from your water collecting on the outside of your jars. So put that in, we're going to add our lid, we're line up the arrow and the notch. I have, I'm using the All American Canner 915 and then we are going to do our thumb screws two at a time opposites always and then we are going to crank up our heat once steam starts coming out of our vent we are going to vent our canner for 10 minutes okay guys we are venting you can see that there is steam pouring out of the vent here so we want that to happen for 10 minutes mine's already been venting for a couple of minutes but we want that to happen for 10 minutes and then once our 10 minutes are up then we can put on our weight now whenever i'm canning i am always canning for less than a thousand feet so it's important that you know your altitude uh, when you are canning to know if there's any adjustments you need to make higher altitudes have to um, can at a different psi i'm going to be canning at 10. so when my 10 minutes are up i'm going to put on my weight we're going to come up to temperature and when my weight starts rocking and rolling then we can start our processing time okay time to put our weight on Find the hole. Time to put our weight on. <laughs> Couldn't find the hole there. Um, anyway, we are going to bring our um, canner up to temperature for the All American canner. It also has a dial gauge, so it, that'll be get up to about 240 degrees. And at that point, my weight will start rocking and rolling. And when your weight starts rocking and rolling, that's when we can start timing. And we're going to be timing for 25 minutes of processing time. Okay, guys, hear that? That means we are time to start timing. So I'm going to set my timer for 25 minutes. When my 25 minutes are up, I'm going to turn my heat off and let my um, canner return to zero pressure naturally, and then we can remove the weight. So the other thing that I need to mention is this is too high. So we need to re uh, reduce our heat. You want to reduce your heat so that your weight rocks one to three times a minute. We don't want it rocking the whole time. That means your heat is too high. So make sure you reduce your heat so that it rocks one to three times a minute. Okay guys, when my time was up, I turned off my heat and then I've let my canner come back down to zero pressure. So now we can remove our weight. I'm going to wait five minutes and then we can take the lid off and when we, after we take the lid off, then we need to let the jars cool for 10 minutes. So I'll bring you back after 15 minutes, the five, and then remove the lid and then 10 more to let our jars sit. And then I will show you our delicious stock. 
Okay guys, we are all done with the waiting. I waited my 10 minutes after I took the lid off. I let my jar sit for 10 more minutes, so we are good. So now we can look at our delicious stock. I think most of my jars have already sealed. So great, this is one of the things that I don't ever let us run out of on my shelf. Um, it's just, it's just a great staple to have. And like I said, you can't buy anything this good in the grocery store. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful, delicious and nutritious turkey stock with your Thanksgiving carcass. How great is that? You get turkey Thanksgiving day, a few leftovers maybe, and at least six quarts of delicious stock all for one turkey. That's awesome. I love that. One thing that I did want to mention, if you are interested in amping up the nutrition value in your stock, and it also gives it a pretty color, I did talk about adding vegetable peelings and all that, but one thing that you can add that is really great is a sweet potato. And all I do is I just scrub it really well and then chop it in big chunks, cut it in half or thirds, whatever. You don't have to do too much to it, but I leave the peeling on and everything and it gives your stock a beautiful color and it also amps up the nutrition value of your stock. So just, just another little tip there. So I hope that we've answered all the questions on stock. If there's something that I haven't covered and you need some answers, please feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section. I will be happy to get back to you just as soon as I can. And um, the other thing that I keep forgetting to mention in my videos, you wanna make sure that you let your jars sit at least 12 hours undisturbed and then remove your rings, check your seals, wash and label your jars and then store them in a cool dry place. So anyway, Thanks so much for coming along with me, guys. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving and you'll give this a try. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.